Hello, and welcome to uh, Sonata Consulting's beginner series. This is our continued series on Zoho campaigns. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up a workflow in Zoho campaigns. Most people refer to this as either a strip campaign or an email sequence. This is where you're sending more than one email to someone based upon various actions they've taken. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt. Let's get right into it, Tyler. Yeah, so to spin one of these up, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is set up a mailing list. Uh, in our first video in this series, we did go ahead and cover that. So we currently have a list in here of our customers that we'll use for this automation. So to get started, we're going to go to the left hand side of the screen and click on the automations tab. And then we'll go into workflows. Again, a common name for these is like your sequence, a drip, or oftentimes a journey as well. But inside of campaigns, they are called workflows. And we'll go ahead and create our first of hopefully many workflows. Now, like Brett mentioned, right, they do have a lot of kind of pre designed ones that you can work from. Anything from, you know, kind of basic to a nurture series to re engagement. Right. And these are kind of based on some of the best practices that you may have, um, you know, but based on your industry and your customer base, you're going to want to customize these. So an example of this is let's take a look at the basic welcome series. So you can just do a preview of this, kind of see if you want to do it or not. So this is basically saying, hey, on a form submission, and we're going to talk about this in detail in a little bit, but you can have this come in from a list from the CRM. You can have it come in from a form that someone's filled out. There's all sorts of ways to get contacts into this basic funnel for this overall drip campaign. So immediately without delay, this uh, person is gonna go ahead and get whatever email you put in there. And then based upon what they do, if they click on it, then we're going to go ahead and then one day later, we're gonna add them to another list to say it's you know active contacts, people that are welcome. If they're unresponsive, then we're gonna basically tag them as unresponsive. But you can go on and on. You can kind of play with these templates and look through them. And if you're gonna use them, you're able to fill them all out. But we're actually gonna build one from scratch here to kind of show you all of the things you can do. Yeah, so to do that, we'll go up here to the top right and click on custom workflow. And we'll go ahead and make one for our customers. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is determine the trigger, right? So this is basically what is going to add them into this workflow. In our case, we're gonna go ahead and use list entry. Some of the other ones that are important are, you know, if they filled out a form, if they took a certain action on another email, or oftentimes if they had a task assigned or a tag assigned or removed. Um, but yeah, for this one, we'll go ahead and trigger it on a list. Now, once you add this, you'll need to actually choose which list you're going to use. In our case, let's use customers. And then an important two checkboxes here. So the first one is, do we want to trigger this workflow to existing contacts? Um, most of the time, you're going to want this to be yes. And this basically means, you know, do we only want new people added to this list to go into the workflow? Or do we want to trigger it to our existing and any future additions to this list? And then lastly, you know, do we want to remove contacts from the workflow if they're removed from this list? Oftentimes you're gonna wanna say yes to this. Now, sometimes maybe not if it's kind of just like a longer form informational series and it's okay for them to stay. Again, to be clear, this is not an unsubscribe. This might just be them taking an action that removes them from this list elsewhere. Um, so oftentimes we'll have both of those checked. And so now we're ready to get into actually starting the actions that we're going to take once someone is added to this list. Yeah, let's just kind of run through these one by one. So they're, they're very basic. You can send an email. Uh, you can send a survey email. We talked about this in previous tutorials about SMS. So you actually can mix and match these. So if you've set up Twilio inside of your Zoho campaigns, you're actually send, you can send SMSs to your people in the middle of this overall campaign. You can do A, B testing based upon various emails. What's gonna, what's gonna work best. Um, Tyler, let's go through the rest of them. Yes, yeah, so you can set up little reminder loops. These can be useful if you wanna trigger it when they didn't open a certain email set up a waiting period or a conditional wait. So wait only if it's a certain type of person or a certain type of contact. Um, you can do some list actions. So remove from a list or add to a list based on you know, previous action in the workflow. 
Then we can do anything around tags, scoring, updating fields, and even doing some actions over in the CRM, which I'll actually demo in a moment. And additionally, there's some control options. So, you know, putting in some filters or splits. So, you know, we can have like a three-way split. If industry is A, go this way. If industry is B, go another way. Um, and lastly, there are some flow control options. So kind of merging things back together, um, exiting or moving to the end of workflows as well. And then last but not least, we can trigger things that happen at the end of the workflow. Some of these are shared with things that are happening at the beginning. But using this, we'll define that you know nothing else is going to happen after it. So again, lists, tags, and scores are kind of the big ones, as well as doing some of those CRM actions. So now let's go ahead and start to build our workflow a little bit here. So I'll go ahead and just drag our send email in, which is now added it directly after they've been added to the list. So kind of starting top to bottom here, the first thing we're going to want to do is define our waiting period. Oftentimes for this first email, we can go ahead and just do this immediately and say the moment that they're added to this list, we'll go ahead and send out this email. Then we'll create the message. This is going to pull up that exact same view that you're using in regular campaigns. So our previous beginner's guide kind of walked through all of the individual settings here. Uh, so we won't cover that in too much detail in this video. And then lastly, a real important part here is deciding if we want to have response tracking on. And this is really one of the most powerful things about these workflows. So I'll go ahead and turn that on now. And basically what we're doing here is saying we want to branch our workflow based on people doing specific things. So if someone is unresponsive, we'll go down path A. If they open the email, we'll go down path B. And if they click the email, we'll go down path C. Now up here at the top, we can decide how long we want to wait before we call them one of these options, right? So we're basically giving them, let's say, three days to open or click the email. Otherwise, they're going to be called unresponsive. And now that we've done that, we'll see that we have our workflow has kind of expanded here with this response tracking. And we have some branch points here after each of these different actions to decide what we want to do. So if someone is unresponsive, you know, maybe we want to send them another email. And if someone opens the email, maybe we'll send them one a little faster. So maybe our unresponsive, we're going to wait for you know, three days. Or 13. Or 13. They're, they're unresponsive anyway. And maybe if we're doing an open, we'll send it after one day because they're a little bit more engaged. And then lastly, maybe if they actually click this email, we want to escalate things and have the sales team get active on this, uh, this particular contact. So if they click this email, Maybe we want to actually drag in a Zoho CRM action and create a task for that person over in the CRM. And so a couple little configuration steps here. We'll choose the, the account that we're connecting through. We'll choose the module, which in this case is contacts. We'll say we'll update existing only because in this case, they're all going to exist already. And then we just create our task. So. I'll say we'll follow up on an email click. We'll say it's due in two days after they clicked it. We'll set our status and priority. And then last but not least, we can go ahead and actually assign this to whoever owns it in the CRM. So whichever of those um, sales reps is responsible for this customer, they'll be the one to get this task. All right, so now that that's set up, you've got the first email, the actions that are taken based upon the customer response. You really do wanna close out each of the various branches that you've had, and those are your end of workflow actions. And you've got a few choices there. Yeah, so let's say here for our two, our unresponsive and our opens, you know, we just want to close them out and exit them from the workflow. So we can actually go ahead and merge them together using the merge option in our flow control. And then we can add our exit from workflow option down here at the bottom. 
Now I will say it's not 100% necessary. You could just leave these kind of tailing off at the end, um, but it's a good practice to just make sure that you're kind of end capping any of the different routes that someone may take. And then over here on the right, maybe we wanna have something else happen. So if they went ahead and actually clicked on an email, maybe we want to also give them a score so we could add them add some points onto their account and just drag in our end of workflow for the scoring. Or, you know, maybe we want to, you know, move them into a separate workflow, which I can do here in our end of workflow actions. I can actually say, you know, they're done in this one. And if they clicked it, they're gonna automatically go into our, you know, engaged customer series, which are more direct and targeted emails to that person. Yeah, and this could be really powerful if you're sending out an email that maybe is talking about two or three maybe completely different products that you're selling. And you, you know, you've got a general email talking about the products and someone actually just clicks on one specific thing, um, which has maybe nothing to do with the other products or services. And you really wanna say, well, if that's the case, we wanna move them over to this particular workflow where we're gonna talk about that particular product, that particular service, and kind of move them down that path as well. So a lot of power here. You can branch these in uh, many different directions. This is a rather simple one we built for you. Uh, we've built some for clients that have 10, 15 emails, uh, a lot of branching, a lot of things going off in a lot of different directions, uh, but it's a powerful tool and we hope you enjoy this tutorial.